The Cure Communities is on its way to Massachusetts. The Fed's deciding not to wait until next year. It officially gets started next week, and that's music to the ears of our next guests. We have with us this morning in the middle, Plymouth County Sheriff Joseph McDonald, Worcester County Sheriff Lou Evangelitis at the end, and Bristol County Sheriff Tom Hodgson with us this morning as well. We appreciate all three of you guys coming in. Uh, Sheriff Hodgson, let's start with you. Why did the Feds feel like now is the time to activate Secure Communities here in the Commonwealth? Well, I think the increased number of deaths, and most recently this past weekend with two additional deaths, and uh, a trooper almost getting uh, hit by an illegal uh, has just mounted uh, the pressure on on the administration of Washington. And there's an election year coming up, and I think it it it, uh, it hurts the integrity of the administration of Washington not to have it when it protects the people of our communities. All right, Sheriff Benjelides, let's go to you. How, how is this going to work? And and you guys implement this now. What difference is it going to make? And exactly how is it going to work from the way things are are going right now? Well, in my conversations with ICE, they were very clear that we don't have to do anything different. We're just going to have immediate access to the Homeland Security database. So when we book people, as we have done, and fingerprint them, those prints are going to get sent. Well, now we're not only going to get the criminal record back, but we're going to get the immigration status, Homeland Security information back on that individual as well, every individual. Mm -hmm. So we're going to immediately know a lot more about these folks we have in our institution than we do today. And that means a lot of information about their immigration status, whether they're a foreign gang member, could even be a terrorist. We're going to get all that information instantaneously, and we don't have that today. Uh, Sheriff McDonald, you guys are very vocal in your support of this. you feel like your voices were heard here? Absolutely. By, uh, by my estimation, we're going online a year earlier than we would have. And as you know, we traveled down to D.C., yep. met with officials in Washington, and indicated to them that even though there was opposition to this at, uh, the, lev at the state level, uh, we are not uh, answering to the, to the governor. We are independently elected law enforcement officials. We wanted the program. We wanted it as soon as possible. And uh, this is the result. And Tom, you've heard the critics, and, and Governor Patrick is one of them. Well, this is going to lead to profiling. Is that a legitimate concern? Absolutely not. This, uh, this will uh, make certain that anybody that's brought into our facilities, whether you're a U.S. citizen or not, you'll be queried against the immigration uh, um, database. So this is a great day for, for the citizens of Massachusetts. It's going to give them additional protections. Uh, against these criminal illegals who are over here committing crimes against them. And well, I'm curious too, because in the city of Boston, there is secure communities in, in the city. They've been using it, and police there say it's been working well. What have you learned from them in talking to them about implementing this thing and how it's actually worked and helped them? Well, we've learned, we went to Washington, D.C. Uh, after Matthew Denise's uh, terrible case in mm -hmm. Milford. We met uh, down to Washington, met with Homeland Security. They informed us that not only Boston, Los Angeles, almost every major metropolitan area in the country, they're utilizing secure communities. It's reducing crime. It's removing illegal criminal aliens from our streets. And it's just a tremendously successful program. We're getting people deported who are criminal aliens. They shouldn't be here. They're committing crimes, making the streets safer. And there is no impact on reporting of crime, as some people are suggesting. Victims are not subject to scare communities. So really, we found in Boston, as well as other, every other major metropolitan area, it's been a total home run for, for criminal law enforcement. So, it's, uh, Joe, it doesn't change how officers are going to go about their jobs. They're not going to be looking for things they wouldn't be looking for normally. Absolutely here. not. No, it's not an issue. Uh, I know that the critics uh, have said that it's going to lead to profiling. It couldn't be further from the truth. We are going to be running everyone's fingerprints, no matter what their name is, no matter what they look like, through this system. So the profiling, like the other arguments, it's specious, it's a red herring. The other thing that uh, is frequently mentioned, as we talked about here, that it's going to have a, a dampening effect on the cooperation between uh, the public at large, in particular the immigrant communities and law enforcement, absolutely not true. In other places where it's been working, this has not been the case. There are no instances documentable uh, where any victims have been uh, singled out or deported because of their cooperation with police. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So the ones who are making that argument are the ones who are perpetuating the fear in the immigrant communities. Tom, you've also heard uh, the governor say, hey, we already send the fingerprints to Washington. We already do that. So we don't really need this. That was what's, what's the difference? Yeah, that was spin control. Actually, um, the governor continues to say that we already sent them to the federal government as though we don't need secure communities. He knows, as does his administration, the ops, that um, they don't send, they only send it to the FBI. It hasn't been queried against Homeland Security database, which is where we're going to get, we're going to get the advantage to identify these people immediately. And Joe, to clear it up for people to understand, you, you said this was like uh, sending the, the fingerprints to, uh, yeah. to the Park Service. Correct, yeah, because, you know, we were sending them 
to the to one agency, the FBI, which was not querying those or sending them to the ICE uh, database. So we were finding out one set of information or sharing that, but not sharing it with the agency that we specifically needed to share it with. So we could have, for all intents and purposes, been sending it to the National Park Service. We had a lot of crimes involving the uh, illegal show, uh, Lou. We've been talking about this. Do you think now going forward we're going to see that start to come down, that there will be people who are deported here and the number of crimes involving the illegals, the types we've been hearing and reading about, are actually going to decline? There's no question about it. This is the program that's devised specifically to make that happen. If you are now arrested and brought into the booking process, we are immediately going to know your immigration status. There's a lot of people being arrested today. We don't know their immigration status, so they don't rise to the level of awareness with ICE, with our sheriffs, with our local police. That will end on Tuesday. You'll immediately know their immigration status, and we can talk to ICE, get a detainer on them, and get them off our mm -hmm. streets for good. So no question we'll increase safety. And when next Tuesday rolls around, it's just a matter of flipping the switch, right? Uh, flipping the switch. And you know, the other piece, of, the other advantage to this is that we're also going to have the additional ability now to have more sh information sharing, which is what we learned at post 9-11. Mm -hmm. We need to do more uh, sharing of information between local, state, and federal agencies. This is going to afford us that opportunity as well. Sheriff Tom Hodgson from Bristol County, Joe McDonald from Plymouth County, Lou Evangelitis from Worcester County. Guys, we do appreciate your time. Thank All you. three sheriffs coming in this morning and uh, sharing the impact of secure communities. Coming to Massachusetts, <coughs> it starts next Tuesday. Guys, once again, we appreciate your time. Let's get back to Shannon.